Let's talk for just a few minutes about three basic parent functions, linear, quadratic, and exponential. We want to be aware of what the behavior is for a linear function, a quadratic function, and an exponential function. So when you recognize one of these, you're kind of aware of what's going to happen with that function if you're asked questions about it. So let's start with linear. Linear is that very basic function we have always started with. And the parent function of a linear equation is just y equals x, where you have a slope of 1 and your y-intercept is just at the origin. So notice it's rising 1 and going to the right 1 each time with my slope. I've also written a table of values here for you to also notice what's happening here. Each x is equal to y. Now that doesn't happen with every line, but in our parent function, it's our most basic version of a linear equation, which is y equals x. So each y is equal to x. And linear is always graphed as just a line, and it has a constant rate of change. Now let's look at quadratic. It acts a little differently, as you can see by my graph. So with quadratic, the parent function is the basic y equals x squared. Nothing's added or subtracted, nothing fancy, just y equals x squared. And when we look at the table of values for y equals x squared, we can see that when we plug in x and we square it, we get our y, and it forms a symmetrical table of values and a symmetrical graph. It's symmetrical about the vertex. So notice if I folded it in half, it would match. That's not necessarily the case over here with linear. So with quadratic, it's symmetrical. We can also look at the data and see that our vertex would be here. And then right around that vertex, our y values repeat in a symmetrical way. So we have the ones, the fours, and the nines, and it helps us to find when we have a nice even vertex, we can find that in the table on our calculator. But anyway, quadratic is symmetrical. Linear is really basic, constant rate of change, symmetrical. And then exponential is the kind that rises really quickly. It starts small and then it grows really fast. So when we look at our table of values, we can see that we start really little. And notice in my tables, I'm using the same x values each time. So you can see what happens very differently to the y values. So over here, x was equal to y. Here, x was squared to equal y. And here, x is our exponent, hence the name exponential. So when x is the exponent, it's an exponential function. And when that is our exponent, it starts really little. But as x gets larger, notice the y gets larger. And then after my graph, it would even get much, much, much larger very, very quickly. So this is the behavior of an exponential graph. And y equals 2 to the x is our basic parent function, we call it. Nothing's been added or subtracted. This is just basic exponential. Now, why does it have a 2, you might ask? Well, if we had y equals 1 to the x power, think about it. 1 to any power is still just going to equal 1. So... That wouldn't be helpful. So that's why the parent function for exponential is y equals 2 to the x power. So we have something to go by. So we can just, like I say, compare all of the tables. Write this in your notes, and you need to sketch each graph. So you have a basic idea of what a linear function behaves and looks like, what a quadratic function behaves and looks like, and what an exponential function behaves and looks like in their most basic form. Now let's look at a few examples. Like, what if you're just looking at the problem and you want to know, like, am I working with a linear, a quadratic, or an exponential function? Because it's good to know what you're working with. So you know what your graph should kind of look like, and you know what your solutions might look like. So let's look at these examples. If I'm given y equals 3 times x plus 1 squared minus 2, I have to pick out, is that linear, quadratic, or exponential? Hmm. That one would be quadratic because it's squared. That's the way you pick out quadratic versus linear or exponential. This little square right here indicates to me that this one is a quadratic function. For number two, and feel free to try these and pause me and then push play and see if you get them right if you want to give them a try. Or you can watch me and then go back and give them a try and see if you can get them right. So number two, y equals 3x minus 2. This one has nothing squared. X is not my exponent. So this one is just linear. Number three, we look at y equals three to the x minus two power. So here x is in my exponent. That's exponential. So when x is the exponent or part of the exponent, 
that's when we know it's exponential, the kind that increases really quickly. For number four, I have y equals 2x squared minus x plus 7. Notice my exponent I'm staring at is a 2, so x is not part of the exponent. It's definitely not linear, so this one would be quadratic because something is squared for my highest degree. Number five, I have y equals 2 to times one third as my base, and then n minus one is my exponent. So by looking at this, the variable other than y, my variable n, is in my exponent. So this is an exponential function. And then let's look at number six. m equals one half n minus five squared. I intentionally use letters other than x and y because the x and y are arbitrary. They can use any other letters and still be talking about something linear, quadratic, or exponential. That part can change, and it still means this one would be quadratic because it is squared. The variables are not part of the exponent, and since it's squared, it can't be linear. So on number seven, y equals three halves x x is not an exponent here and it's not squared so this one is just linear again but notice even though it's written kind of different because I don't have my y-intercept here but if I wrote in the y-intercept it would be a plus zero but then in math we don't write plus zero because it's just not necessary but that one would be linear. On number eight I have x minus seven squared plus three equals f of x f of x is the same thing as y equals. So when you see that, notice it means the same thing. So don't let that part throw you off. And then the square means this one is quadratic. I don't have a variable as my exponent or part of my exponent. And it can't be linear since that part right there was squared. 